What is your goal now, all of you? Why? Our Clear goal the is your ex. Come again, but come again. To clear this exam. Our goal is to measure the why. Our goal is to measure, measure the why. why. This is this is what doctors also do, isn't it? You have clearly explained the problem. Everybody is convinced, but then also doctor will diagnose, isn't it? He will he will give a you know uh, prescription for the diagnosis, and after your diagnosis, diag when the, once the diagnosis report has come, people are now very clear about the intensity of the problem. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. MRI scan will reveal the intensity of the problem. Some some report, blood report that will reveal the intensity of the problem. How big is the problem or how small is the problem? This is called ground reality also known as baseline performance. You told me 3.8% rejection. But then with uh, best of your efforts, you have concluded that it is 3.8%. But what is the ground reality? I want to know, yes or no? So you will collect the data for a considerable period of time and then you will recalculate your Y. <laughs> All of you understand what and what is the purpose of measure phase? We collect data over a considerable period of time and then we will try to calculate the baseline and then we will redefine the problem. We will redefine the problem. When the, when the, pro the problem statement will now become upgraded. Right? 3.8% will be rewritten as 4.7%. Possible or not? People are telling that 3.8, 3.8 on an average. Okay, I just believed them and then I made a project charter. My sponsor also believed me. But now, the reality is different. It's not 3.8%. It is 4.7%. I have seen last 30 days. Something significantly higher. So, I will re- I know, uh, rewrite my problem statement, probably update the business case. I'll do all these updations and then again might, you know, get it approved by my sponsor. Now, the benefits are much more than what was earlier expected. So, the ultimate goal of the measure phase is to accurately calculate the baseline performance. So, what will happen in the measure phase? There, at the end of every phase, there will be a review meeting happening in a Six Sigma project. We call it Tollgate Review. And then certain steps in the measure phase and the deliverable is baseline performance. And then certain tools you need to master. So these are the questions. Have you identified the CTQs to be measured? That's why we have been talking about CTQ right from the beginning. Even after the measure phase, if the CTQs are not clear, you are not going to solve the problem, ladies and gentlemen. So can you just go behind the previous slide for one second, please? This one? Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, if the CTQs are not clear, it simply means you, know, you are not going to solve anything. Imagine in a hospital, the doctor is giving a dose of injection to a child, small child, and the child is crying. Child is crying. Now, you have to ensure no child is crying in the hospital while giving a dose of injection. This is a project for you. Will you be able to take up this project? All the, all the Six Sigma bells here. No child should cry while giving any dose of the injection. Why are you shaking your head? Why you are not willing to take the project? Because you are not sure about the CTQ. But if I ask you to speak out, tell me how will you approach this problem if given a chance? How will you approach this problem? Come on, all of you. Please. Project that may not be achievable, sir. The kids. Uh, uh, see, all of you, you have to speak slow, number one. Otherwise, you better come on video and then speak. If you speak you know, fast and that too, 
your voice is like you know voice of the stranger i am not able to really understand ah, now i could and listen to you yes bharat target yeah. audience uh, the results may not be achievable maybe after we identify oh, target audience results may not be achievable okay you are you are concerned about the child right because the, yeah. we don't know why okay it looks problem is you no know, you, you are not able to you know actually uh, define the problem properly that is your concern okay but does it mean we can't really tackle such problems we are meant for handling complex cases right let us we come with the ctq definitely no one of you can suggest the ctq now for this case i don't want to see even a single child crying in my hospital while giving the injection tell me what will be the one single metric that will improve uh, it's the behavior of the doctor or uh, the, the way the doctor handles the kid okay very good i i really appreciate your you know approach and thinking but that's not the answer size of the injection and the way it is poked size of the injection can you further further drill down what do you mean by size of the injection means uh, okay. the thickness of the needle and the needle ah. try to provide oh, medicine by oral way we all must clap for bharat kumar let me hear some noise here கேக்க மாட்டேங்குது சவுண்டே கேக்க மாட்டேங்குது தி சைஸ் ஆஃப் தி नीडल இஸ் வாட் இஸ் மேக்கிங் தி चाइल्ड டு cry isn't it maybe the diameter or thickness or whatever you call it if you can really really you know make some improvement there the child can't even feel that you know an, an injection is given yes or no the thinner the needle you know the smoother it is you know uh, it enters your skin and then you know the injection is done so that means ctq identification is very very important have you identified the right ctq this will be an imp definite question at the end of the measure phase if you are if you are struggling there you know definitely the people will understand you are going in the wrong direction and all the budget is going to be wasted do you have an appropriate data collection plan how much how long the data will be collected right to to validate the problem and to validate the solution and the improvement and uh, how who will collect the data when the data will be collected this is this is this is in fact the first step data collection plan and then do you really have a measurement system which is capable and adequate because you are saying that you know you need an accurate measurement of baseline if you are taking mri scan if the mri scan uh, scanner is a uh, very old which is less accurate will you be interested in taking your scan there definitely we would be interested no. isn't it it will give all forms of error even though you stay healthy it will still figure out a disease suppose if there is a disease or some problem the mri may not capture it in this is called you know measurement error type 1 error and type 2 error false positive and false negative right and uh, there is a problem there is a problem and you don't detect it there is a problem you don't detect it detect it this is type 2 error there is no problem at all but you still account it as a problem that is type 1 error so why this type 1 and type 2 error is coming because of the poor measurement system capability whether the measurement system is old or it is not suitable to the requirement or people are handling it wrongly all any of this can be the reason ultimately when you are collecting data you should use a measurement system that is capable and as well as adequate and so you can take a call on this is the data collected appropriate for analysis if the measurement system itself is not capable and you know the data will definitely be a garbage garbage in will be garbage out right so whether i can whether the data is worthy for analysis or not it depends on the msa report what is msa msa report measurement system analysis report which will talk about the estimate of the error the msa will give you estimate of the error measurement error if that estimate is acceptable then you collect data if the estimate is unacceptable you may have to make improvement in the measurement system and finally how far is your project goal how far is your project goal from the current performance 
you you now found that the rejection rate is 4.7% not 3.8 rejection rate is 4.7 problem is redefined what is your target less than 1% now how much is the gap 1 to 4.7 3.7% is the gap in performance earlier you thought that it is 2.8 now what is the revised gap what is the accurate gap in performance 3.7% all of you are able to understand my number here now the business case will be different cost of poor quality will be different benefits will be no much more higher than what you have already projected so ultimate deliverable from the measure phase is baseline the first step data collection plan and then the next step measurement system validation and then the next step baseline performance ultimate deliverable is baseline how can i measure the baseline in the rejection pro in the rejection rate project the baseline is rejection rate isn't it when the when everyone is comfortable with the rejection rate metric rejection rate you use it that's all suppose if everyone is comfortable with the dpmo use dpmo if everyone is comfortable with the ppm use it everyone is comfortable with the sigma level use it cpcpk or uh, yield metric all are giving the same meaning how no how you know how much is your baseline all are giving the same meaning but different language different terminology the more you understand the more you can use but all of them are tools at the end of the measure phase you will have clarity on all this now here is the tool operational definition data type i think this was taught to you yesterday i mean the day number 2 yes yes operation yes. nation and data type and then measurement system validation is that taught to you bias repeatability reproducibility yes 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 it was not clear that much it was we... not fully discussed only some of you asked a question and then you know some knowledge is given we are going to deep dive today only and then baseline performance traditional yield first pass yield throughput yield dpmo cpcp i think yield was covered or not Yes, yes, yes. Yes, covered. Yes, covered. All right. So I just want to have a check whether you people have understood correctly, so that I can spend time properly in the required area. Now, what is your understanding about operational definition? One of you. What is your understanding about operational definition? Thank you, character. yeah ctq characteristics very good we you are measuring ctq characteristic you know what is your ctq but then the data collector may not know that what is be... yeah what is to be measured yes what is to be measured and how is to be measured that's all what is to be measured and how is to be measured imagine i want you to measure the lead time of a particular process i want you to measure the lead time of a particular process now it is very important i make you understand what do i mean by the process lead time yes or no if i don't tell this you know bring this clarity then you might measure something automatically your data will be properly you no know, contaminated with lot of error because you don't know what is lead time there is a confusion isn't it imagine your project is reducing the waiting time do you know the meaning of waiting time all of you or or is there is there different is there different definitions exist for waiting time is that so many waiting time is possible then the operational definition should pinpointedly tell what is the waiting time you are trying to reduce let's say in a restaurant what is the meaning of waiting time in a restaurant the time from the, the order was placed and it was delivered i take it for the server to serve the rooms hmm. the time between order and, and food delivery. delivery okay the moment you place the order with the waiter or you know the order taker and then that moment the food is food delivered to your table this is what you mean as waiting time similarly suppose if you if you if you go to a restaurant with the family 
and if there is a heavy rush every table is occupied now probably no the the you know manager over there will ask you to wait and once he will take your name and then once a table is really free then he will call you and then allot the table here also waiting is happening but this waiting time is different from the previous waiting time we were talking the moment customer enters and registers his name and the moment he is allotted a table the time duration is known as customer waiting time for table allotment after he place the order and the food arrives the time spent is known as waiting time for delivery order Del delivery order delivery so waiting time there are different waiting time available you can't simply confuse everyone by saying that it is waiting time this clarity is essential in a six sigma project because you are trying to attack variation you you yourself should not become the source of variation all of you understand my point the project manager the data collector himself should not become the source of variation a clear unambiguous description of the characteristics to be measured is known as operational definition all of you are with me clear yes yes unambiguous description of the characteristics to be measured you might tell surface finish you might tell you know lead time cycle time diameter what is the diameter you are talking about are you talking about the neck diameter are you talking about the head diameter both are different isn't it i think yesterday a video would have been played to you is that played to to clarify the operational definition we continue yes so just sharing my slide again yeah so we are here in this slide we are talking about the operational definition and how about your understanding on the data type all of you have you understood the data type let me know what are the two major types of data you have come across i think this was discussed variable attributes discrete and continuous money data second data come again discrete and continuous i understand <laughs> primary and secondary primary and secondary data skewed data ordinal data okay so much qualitative so, and quantitative so many types of data you all know that's really good but the broader classification you all must know in the context of six sigma the first thing to know is you should know the difference between continuous data and discrete data right continuous data and discrete data even before coming to the continuous and discrete there are two major classification qualitative data and quantitative data <clears throat> if i collect all your name and type it in an excel sheet is it a data yes is it qualitative okay. data or quantitative data it's a quantitative data quantitative data no your names are in numbers it's a qualitative data it is qualitative data right so if you can express the collected information using numbers then only it is known as quantitative data otherwise it is qualitative data qualitative data i collect your name i collect your native place all of these are qualitative data i collect all your age <laughs> and type it in a column qualitative now this column of data is quantitative Quality. quantitative you all know to broad category of data one is qualitative other one is quantitative so now within quantitative there are two types one is continuous another one is discrete one is continuous another one is discrete continuous means measurable characteristics continuous means measurable characteristics i can measure your age can we all measure your age yes age is 42 32 32.5 32.7 right and uh, it is expressed in terms of a unit called years 32 means 32 years 
32.5 means 32.5 years, right? Temperature, is it a continuous data? Because yeah. temperature is measurable. All continuous data comes with the unit of measurement. Comes with the unit of measurement, pressure, temperature, strength of the material, lead time, cycle time, delivery time, waiting time. All of these are continuous data. All of you are with me on continuous data? Yeah. How will you identify your data is continuous? It is measurable and it will have a unit of measurement. Clear? A unit of measurement. And then it will have decimals. It can be expressed in terms of decimals. Temperature 42.5 degrees Celsius. 22.5 degrees Celsius. Can you see decimals here? Can you see a unit of measurement? Is it measurable? So it is continuous. Another way of measuring is discrete data. Now I just ask you, how many participants are attending the session? How many participants are attending the session? 39. 39. So how do you get this number? Have you used any measuring instrument? You just counted it, right? So countable data or discrete data. It can't, it generally it can't come in decimals unless and until you specifically make it. It can't come in decimal. You can't say 38.5 people are there. No. Always it is either 38 or 39. It is always a whole number. Now, how many people are, are staying on video? Me, RK, always on video. And now we have another four people. And now one more coming. So two plus five, seven. Now the seven is continuous or discrete? Discrete. Discrete. Again, it is a countable information. How many defects are happening every shift? It's a continuous data or discrete data? Discrete. How many defects? Discrete. How many children in your family? Discrete. How many cell phones you have? Discrete. Discrete. How many machines you have? Discrete. How many suppliers you have? Discrete. You will be dealing with a lot of data in your workplace. You need to know whether your data is continuous or discrete. Why, sir? Why should we know this? You remember in the first class I told you there are separate tools available based on you know, the nature of work. If your work is woodwork, then you need carpentry tools. Sometimes it is plumbing tools, right? Sometimes it is you know uh, some other tools. Similarly, depending on the type of data, you have to use the right choice of the tool. For example, Pareto, we use, and in Pareto, we have an x-axis, we have an y-axis. We have an x-axis, we have an y-axis. X-axis is normally the different types of defects. So what kind of data it is? It is not continuous. It is not discrete. It is called, you know, attribute data specifically known as nominal data specifically known as nominal data all your names if i type it in an excel sheet then it is a nominal data the purpose of nominal data is to differentiate one from the other that's all gurusami is different from arun kumar that's what i can understand by knowing his name gurusami isn't it so the nominal data it just helps in differentiating but your discrete data, in addition to differentiate, I can also know the order of the data. For example, your age, all your age. If I know all your age, I can find out the eldest participant, isn't it? I can even find out the youngest participant. I will be able to arrange all of you in the order of the age, possible or not. Now your data is discrete. At the same time, it is ordinal data. All of you are clear with this? After learning so much things, if you get confused, we can't do anything, right? You have to be very, very careful here. You should, you are also equally responsible while learning from us. Yes, of course, sir. There is nominal. The purpose is known. And now there is ordinal. Ordinal is actually a discrete data only. No, uh, or no, or it can be it can be any data, discrete or continuous. But then it helps us to understand the order. 
which is big, which is small, we know. Then it is ordinal data. But uh, fundamentally, the first thing we all have to be very, very clear is difference between continuous and discrete. Continuous is measurable, discrete is countable. And continuous data will have decimals and discrete data is always a whole number. And continuous data will have a unit of measurement. Discrete data is always numbers. That's all. No specific unit of measurement. Right? And then in the discussion, we also learned two more terminology. What are those? Nominal, ordinal. When will you say the data is just nominal? When the information is just helping you to differentiate one item from the other item. When do you say the data is ordinal? When the information is helping you to find out the order of, no? Order, which is bigger, which is smaller. In the school, they used to give rank, right? First rank, second rank, third rank, fourth rank. What is this data? No, this is ordinal data. Ordinal data. All right. But if they give you a test mark, test mark also helps you to find out the order. Who has scored more? Then obviously he is the first ranker. But now it gives more information. It can even tell you what is the difference between first rank and second rank. But when you just have the rank, you don't know the difference. But when you have the marks, you know that you know the order as well as the difference. That is the advantage with the continuous data. So test mark is a continuous data. All of you are with me. Which is better? You working with the continuous data is better, working with the discrete data is better. Continuous. Yeah. Continuous data is your gold mine. That can give you more information than more data for the same scenario. Yeah, it gives you accurate estimate or accurate value of you no know, what you observe. So try to collect you no know, data in continuous fashion. Very good. And now bias, repeatability, reproducibility, these are new stuff which I will cover up. And then yield metric, traditional yield covered with all of you. All of you understood. I think RK has taught you this. What is mm -hmm. traditional yield? One of you define. If you define correctly, we can we, we don't have to spend more time on the same output thing. Upon input. Output upon input. That's all. Output divided by input. Whatever is the output and the definition of output is output. That's all. Anything that is coming out, that is output. But what is first pass yield? Output minus output rejection minus upon rework by input. Uh, first term, right? right? First uh, time, right. right. Output minus rework divided by input. That is your first pass yield. Which is better? Just yield is better or first pass yield is better? First pass. First pass. First pass. Ah. We all first want to pass better. the exam in the first attempt itself. None of us want to fail and then pass again, isn't it? Yes. Once we fail, I don't know, that's an arrears. Nobody, no one likes arrears. Rework is similar to the arrears, isn't it? People have failed in the first attempt and now trying to pass in the second attempt. So rework should be accounted under cost of poor quality. That means rework is a failure. This understanding is very, very important. Right? Most of the time we fail to recognize that rework is a failure. When you ask people, what is your uh, rejection? They will tell, you know, sir, rejection is less than 1%. That means they think the yield is 99%. But if you actually ask them, sir, how much the amount of product gets reworked? <laughs> Rework is another 4%. That means your yield is not 99%. Not, not your yield is only 95%. Right? The, the, the thing is, they are using traditional yield so that you know, they can take advantage of you know, the situation. The reality, you understand better with the help of first pass yield, where rework is also recognized as a failure. Right? So, so knowing all these tools can help you to bring more problems to the surface. Will help you to understand the real intensity of the problem. That's the you know, thing. And then DPMO we already covered. Defects per million opportunity. GEMS experiment you remember. And CPCPK I am going to cover now. Rolled throughput yield. Hope you all understood what is uh, rolled, rolled throughput yield. And then when to use it. Is that known to you? Yes. Yeah. Rolled throughput yield means if your processes are connected in sequence, after foundry, it goes to machine shop. After machine shop, it goes to surface data. 
and then it goes to packaging so the output of first process becomes input for the next process input of the second process becomes input for the third process output of the third process becomes input to the next fourth process in that way if processes are linked then the overall yield the overall yield is nothing but product of product of the first pass yield at every stage all of you are all of you understand this point yes, yes, yes throughput yield means product of the yield of all the stages all right so ultimately the outcome is baseline accurate baseline so little stats we all should understand because we are in the measure phase what is stat statistics what is statistics statistics is a science statistics is a science of collecting data tabulating the data collecting the data tabulating the data and then we analyze the data we analyze the data isn't it and then we present the data maybe we plot some pareto we plot some pie chart sometimes we we present the data in the form of graphs and finally with all the analysis we try to interpret and what's happening sometimes we try to understand what's happening sometimes we try to understand what has happened sometimes we try to understand what will happen this is exactly statistics all of you understand you use data just to understand either what's happening or what has already happened or what will happen in the future this is known as statistics right any calculated any calculated value using the collected data is also called as statistics i total all your marks i conduct an exam i total all your marks now i get a single number what is the single number total marks this is also a statistics so statistics is a science of collecting tabulating presenting analyzing and interpreting the data to understand what is happening in my process to understand what has already happened in my process to understand what will happen in my process if i continue running the same process all of them are known as statistics so if we use data to understand the present and past that is known as descriptive statistics you use data to understand the present and the past that is descriptive statistics if you use data to predict the future something unknown you are trying to understand that is inferential statistics whatever is known if you simply describe that is descriptive statistics isn't it how many people are participating in the training program 40 45 people how many are present 39 how many have passed all 39 how many have failed no one have failed what is this data descriptive or inferential if the exam is over then it is descriptive before the exam i am asking how many people will pass the exam what is your prediction now all of you will pass yes all of you yeah. now that is inferential right so this is widely used in all business even in sports it is used isn't it even before the match is happening people are predicting who will win the cup isn't it who will win the trophy they are using inferential statistics whether virat kohli will hit a half century or not that's an inferential statistics so far virat kohli has hit 100 century that is descriptive statistics similarly with the data in hand you understand sir the rejection rate is this much last 6 months what is that descriptive statistics sir after the project the rejection rate will be less than 1% what is this inferential statistics hope all of you understand what is statistics right and in order to use the statistics properly you need to understand lot of statistical tools average is a statistical tool isn't it average is a tool average is a metric right and anything you calculate is also called as statistics all right with that note so why statistics you can summarize your data 
with the central value if i ask you know how uh, how good virat kohli is in terms of batting how will you tell how will you answer this question he is too good but still not clear then what will you do you will say sir his batting average is 55 so he should be a nice bat batsman isn't it so what is this you have used right now you have used the statistics average. batting average average is a central value it means there is an equal chance always for virat kohli to score a score either below 55 or above 55 that is the meaning of average isn't it average means most of the time he scores around that value that is the point isn't it most of the time he will score around the average approximately half of the innings he should have scored runs <laughs> below 55 approximately half of the match he should have scored above 55 <laughs> so some some kind of you know understanding you come to the more you look at the central value and statistics is also used to assess the degree of variation though virat kohli's average is 55 it doesn't mean in every match he has scored 55 no in certain matches he he got duck out also in certain matches he scored above 100 also but majority of the matches he scored around 55 so the amount of variation is letting you to understand whether he is a consistent player or a highly inconsistent player am i right what is your opinion about virat kohli is a consistent player or a highly inconsistent consistent because you see his score you know not varying much from the average isn't it even if he gets out you should have at least you know scored 20 30 runs that's you know so when variation is less no the performance is considered consistent when variations are too high the performance is inconsistent so with the help of some knowledge about statistics you can always you know make comparison and make and make a meaningful decision you can compare two groups you can compare two employee you can compare two company you can compare two products you can compare two suppliers you can compare you know two process two scenarios and make best decision out of it right and now here some statement is written and the statement is about you know how the vehicles are moving on an average vehicles are moving around 11099 miles per year in america but in canada vehicles are moving how much 10317 miles one vehicle is moving 11000 miles in america in a year but 10000 miles in canada so where vehicles are moving you know uh, longer distance comparatively between america and canada it is america right so this is statistics so statistics is the science of collecting organizing presenting analyzing and interpreting the data to assist in making more effective decision you also understood what is descriptive statistics and what is inferential statistics right so i don't want to spend more more time here and uh, see here you collected this kind of information uh, you did some kind of survey to understand what's exactly happening in a, a junction right in a uh, signal area and in one hour you found this many vehicles crossing now the now the result is in your hand what is this statistics is it descriptive or inferential descriptive descriptive descriptive, descriptive right so now with this information tomorrow how many vehicles will cross the same point at the same time inferential now that is inferential statistics right? so so that's how you are going to use this is this is this is an important skill right you all must develop and uh, so descriptive understood inferential understood so tomorrow you want to construct a whether to construct a bridge or not bridge or not and that is based on an inferential statistics isn't it so estimate how how intense the traffic will be and so to avoid it you are planning for a you know construction of a flyover or something all right so descriptive is understood you can just read through this slide these are not much difficult all right now data collection plan yesterday you uh, learned so i'm just moving this because this was taught to you by vinod shankaran so ctq critical to quality characteristics right the characteristics of a product of a service or a process or a design right whose 
standards or specifications must be met in order to satisfy the customer all of you understand the definition did you mean it's a characteristics of your product or the characteristics of your service right whose standards or the specification limits must be met for example by joining the six sigma training program how many tools you have mastered that is a ctq am i right you attended training program with us and you also attend training program some other source after attending the training program from two different sources how many tools you are now feeling comfortable that's a ctq you might not have thought in this manner but that is an important ctq and you will have some target in your mind so at least six days at least i must learn about at least some 50 tools plus or minus plus or minus 5 is okay because you know exactly you know doing getting the target is difficult always so customer always give tolerance so 50 plus or minus 5 means your upper limit is 60 55 lower limit is 45 any number between 45 to 55 i am sure you will be happy about your learning because you have made up your mind and that's that's called you know the customer requirement so this has to be understood with respect to everything you want to improve it whether it's a product or a design or you know process or whatever it is there has to be a measurable characteristics there has to be a target there has to be upper limit there has to be a lower limit this is you know ctq and data type you know qualitative quantitative continuous discrete right and within continuous discrete hope you had this exercise yesterday you had it all of you no okay then you tell me what is turn around time is it uh, continuous data or discrete data continuous continuous you are correct but the, your uh, tone is very low why customer satisfaction score discrete 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 number of failed transaction discrete discrete the maturity amount in your fd account continuous yes. continuous the available bank balance continuous continuous time to resolve an issue continuous continuous number of credit cards that are linked to your savings account discrete time taken to process a loan application continuous continuous number of clients served discrete discrete your understanding is perfect and unit of measurement has to be proper and it should be followed consistently by all the data collectors consistently means if i stick to a specific unit you should also use the same unit if i collect data in centimeter if i collect data in centimeter and you are collecting the same data in millimeter and someone else is collecting the same data in kilometer do you think our data will be you know uh, useful Hmm. or oh, before doing any mathematical calculation all your data should be expressed in unit unit isn't it otherwise you will go mad with your calculation this is this has to be no important principle has to be followed if people are collecting data everyone should collect the data with the same unit of measurement i am measuring something in minutes and you are measuring the same thing in seconds you are measuring same thing in uh, hours and everything is typed in a same column now data becomes a garbage it is of no use if you calculate any statistics you can't understand the present you can't understand the past you can't predict any future always when you are predicting the future please note you are only getting an estimate there will be a limitation when you are predicting anything right all right so all of you understand the importance of having a unit of measurement and then operation definition we already spoke that's also very very important look here various definitions for you know metrics can you tell me in which industry these kind of metrics will be helpful or these kind of definitions will be helpful restaurant restaurant right yeah yeah 
So always in your project charter, if you use any terminology specific to your industry, please explain it in the same project charter. Otherwise, most of the time during conversation, we see people, you know, using some acronyms. Using some acronyms. So, it, it's very important that you make the other person understand, right? By giving a proper definition. So, just one minute. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Just give me one minute. I'll just come back. Yeah. Yes, in the meantime, if you have any question, you ask me. I'm the filler. <laughs> Data collection plan. Yeah, what is the last sentence he said? Give me one minute. You ask for one minute. Yeah. <laughs> Probably <laughs> his intention was for you to continue. Yes, yes. He's going to come and continue. He's got some urgent matters. Now, um, yeah, yes, come. I will ask one question. Right. X data that can be collected at the same time. Subgroup size. Or can you understand anything from this? Can you understand the meaning of this? Hmm? Sir, yes or no? Uh, no. I, I ask this question to your group. That's all. That is the subgroup size. The subgroup size is your, uh, your number of counts. You are about 20, 40, 38 people are there. So subgroup size is 38. I'm collecting the data from them. What will I say? What will I say? I will say that uh, silence is the answer. That's all. If I get the answers, different answers, I will get the, all these different answers. But the subgroup size is limited to five, not more than five, normally. All right. So, thank you, sir. See, all of you, what do you see in my slide, actually? A table, right? The table is still letting you understand how the data must be collected. Can you see that, all of you? Now, Y yes. measure. What is Y measure? The CTQ. The CTQ. Or the CTB. Y measure is always the CTQ or the CTB. An operational definition. And uh, next column, data source. What do we mean here? Data source means where from the data, data must data. be collected. They where from collected. Do you want data from first shift, second shift, third shift? Or do you want it from all the shift? Isn't it? So, so where as well as when? Where as well as when? Suppose you have 10 machines from where, you know, the same products are getting produced. Do you want to collect data from all 10 machines? All these things are known as data collection plan. And when you are making a decision for all these questions, questions you know, if you understand, if you have a proper understanding of the problem, you will be able to take a correct decision. Am I yes or no? Yes. If you have, if you, if you yourself are not very clear about the problem, then you will always, you know, take a decision randomly. Okay, take data from first three machines. But no logic behind it. But if you know the first three machines are old and, you know, your people are having a suspect on it, then, you know, it makes sense. So, though all these, you know, whatever we speak in real, real time, they are nothing but, you know, the, you know they are now uh, framed as some tools here. So, data collection plan, in order to arrive on a data collection plan, you must have a thorough understanding of the problem. Sample size, how much data will do for you? You want to understand whether your child has really improved or not. Now, tell me, your child is very weak in mathematics and then now you now you have done, you know, you have made some lot of uh, efforts, like you appointed tuition teacher and you are also teaching every day, extra one hour. Now, you see some improvement in the marks. Now, how much data you think is required to conclude that your child has improved in the mathematics subject? Tell me. I'm saying. Yes, sir. Sudhagar, sir. Come on. You, you, you really can't say with one uh, data point there. You need uh, maybe unit test, class test, monthly test. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one, uh, one particular term. One term. Uh, marks yeah. in uh, one complete term. All the class tests. And yeah. then the determined test. If you see improvement in all of this, then you can make a conclusion. Yes, your child has really improved in max. 
so how do you how do you you know come out, you know come uh, come out with such a decision because you have a proper understanding of the problem otherwise you will be completely confused sir this data is not sufficient right and I, then you have to collect data throughout the year so ultimately the point here is the defined phase goes a long long way in making you take more and more effective decision in every other phase. If you are very lethargic and don't put sincere efforts in uh, defining the problem, you have to struggle in measure, analyze, improve, control everywhere. All of you are with me on this? The defined part, defined phase is the toughest phase. Then measure. And once the defined is problem is well defined, it is almost half done. And now who will collect the data? This is also important. Who is going to be our data collector? X or Y or Z? And when he is supposed to collect data? Every shift or particular shift or any specific time? Right? And that has to be cleared. And how he should collect the data? Sampling technique. Whether he should uh, take every tenth piece, whether he should take every hundredth piece or every thousandth piece, this is called Sampling technique. And at that time, how many data you should collect? This is called sample size or subgroup size. Most of the time, people you know have a lot of confusion here. Sample size. Sir, 100 is the sample size. 30 is the sample size. Please reframe your question. It is not sample size. It is subgroup size. It is not sample size. Subgroup size. Which means how many samples you should take at a time. How many samples you should collect at a time? How many samples you should collect together? And another question is the spread depth or the duration of data collection. Will you collect the data from Monday to Saturday or will you collect the data from uh, beginning of the month till the end of the month? And you will get an answer here once you understand various sampling techniques, various sampling techniques and the plus and minus of the techniques. And certain areas, you may have to deep dive. You may have to, you know, you know spend some more time and that is why hierarchy is created. Please note all of you. Green belt, black belt, and then master black belt. Even before green belt, there is one level known as yellow belt. So, if, even if you try to know everything in one go, that will be difficult, right? So don't worry if there are certain gaps here and there. You can always master it at a later stage after properly digesting all your learnings here. So data collection plan is here. Clear with all of you? Yes, you have to consider data type also, continuous or discrete here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to declare, yes. That is all. That also you can declare, yes. And continuous is preferred always. And because, look at, yeah, hmm. if it speaks, then it will be the all the plan will be the uh, uh, non fertile actually. So if we mix that continuous and discrete data, then our analysis will be the completely inelevated. Yes, so, yes, yes, yes. You need to know whether your data is continuous or discrete, and the battery is continuous, right? All right. Thank you. And see here, there is a definition given for sample. A sample is a subgroup taken or collected from the population. The sample must truly represent the characteristics of your population because we ultimately want to understand the characteristics of the population. Can one of you tell me, what do we mean by population, particularly in a business scenario, what do we mean by population? In a business scenario, what do we mean by population? Number. Population is universe, total universe uh, data. And total universe that means earth mercury venus everything included in the population data. population number is the, the uh, data size output. number of people data size now population is the total output means entire data the entire data no uh, because yes. our, our understanding representations is, of whole representation of all the total volume. Representation of all, see, all your answers may be correct in some sense. But then, you know, it might lead to, you know, it might give a misleading uh, understanding to someone else. You may be correct with that. 
So here in a business scenario, population means all the products we produce. That is the population. All right. All the products that we produce in our factory, that is the population. Am I correct or not? Okay. We are concerned about those products. We are concerned about all the all the service we offer to n number of customers. That is what we are trying to you know make sure of you know world class quality. So population is nothing but set of all the products that goes out of our factory. Can I say like that? Can I define like that? All of you agree with me? You will never be able to, you know, access the population in one go. Am I correct? Yes. yes. Because I I keep producing today, tomorrow, even after five years also, I will be producing. My population will be growing. But still, you need to ensure your population characteristics are always acceptable. Still, you need to ensure your population characteristics are always acceptable. Then, then what can I do to ensure my population characteristics are acceptable even though I don't I have poor access? I must use inferential statistics. Isn't it? Population is unknown. But still, I can control the unknown with the help of some samples taken from the population. If you predict the unknown by having some known values in your hand, the statistics is known as inferential statistics. Right? Estimating the unknown with the help of some known values is known as inferential statistics. Am I correct? But what is in your hand? Sample is in your hand. So sample quality is very, very important now, isn't it? How do you measure the sample? How do you collect the sample? You can make mistake in both scenarios. You may use a wrong sampling technique. You may measure wrongly. If you take wrong samples, then you are committing sampling error. If you measure wrongly, then you are committing measurement error. The industry practice is measurement error must be less than 10%. Sampling error must be less than 5%. If you are not limiting the errors lesser than this, your statistics will be considered invalid. Nobody will you know, accept your findings. All of you are with me on this? Yes. yes. Very good. So now we are moving, moving on to measurement system analysis. Sir, one question, sir. Ah, yes, please. How do you determine that the measurement error is less than 10 percent? Yeah, we need to we need to estimate the measurement error. We need to measure the measurement error. We need How? to measure. Uh, we, we have certain tools for that. Okay. Bias is a tool, gauge R and R is another tool. Bias is a tool, gauge R and R is another tool. We are going to talk about it right now. Uh, madam, you have any question, Narmada, madam. Madam, no, no, you, are no. not, you are not audible. I think your device has got some problem. You are speaking, but it's not audible. You can disconnect and connect. Oh, no, we can't, we can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear you. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, I continue. So this 10% and 5%, is it universal across all industries and segments? Yes, yes. It's an industry standard given by AIAG, the Automotive Industry Action Group, which is uh, you know, a group of uh, leading automotive companies like Daimler, Chrysler, you know, all these companies. Long back, they formed an association and they created these guidelines. Even today, it is followed. And it is followed even in other industries, not only automotive. Okay. So that's... a uh, uh, reference guideline. All right. So with that note, let's move on to measurement system analysis. I want all of you to be very, very active, right? Active in the sense you need to answer and then you need to participate. We are going to have some uh, exercise also now, some activity. And what's more important is you have to be doubly active in the afternoon, right? Because forenoons are easier. 
than the afternoon. So bias, repeatability, reproducibility, and then gauge R and R. These are the tools. This will help you to measure the measurement error. Right? We are going to trouble the trouble now. Right? Something similar to that. Right. So let's measure the measurement error. So first of all, why measurement system analysis? I have to be sure that the data in my hand is clean and credible. Yes or no? Oh, I have yes, to be sure course. that the data in my hand is clean and credible. So which is possible only if my measurement system is in good condition. Only if the measurement system is used wisely. If the measurement system is in a bad condition and if it is used badly, then I understand nothing out of the data that is coming from the measurement system. Imagine you drive a car and you want to reach some destination. It's very important that you, you get a clear vision of the road, isn't it? Mm. If we are hiding your windshield with the full of you know, some clutters and windshield is not at all you know, allowing you to see the road, will you be able to drive the car? Will no. you be able to reach the destination? And the risk is more. The same is the situation if you simply you know, uh, use data that is contaminated with error. Trust me, every time you collect the data, error will populate. Error will populate every time a data is collected. What you can do is you can only limit the error. If you drive the car on the road, do you think your windshield will always remain clean? It is definitely will be contaminated with a lot of dust and other things. Same way, every time you collect the data, data will be contaminated with some error. It is either because of the person who is collecting the data or the measurement system or the environment or the combination. Right? So, we are, prob we are in a problem-solving journey. We see the problem, we understand the problem through the data. Like how we see the road through the windshield. We understand the problem through the data. And that's why our data must be clean and credible. Right? And that's why we have MSA. Right? So now you know why we are doing the MSA. After MSA, you understand the condition. Isn't it? People before collecting the data, they were simply approximately telling that no rejection is 3.8%. But after collecting the data, you now understand that the rejection is 4.7%, not 3.8%. Now the clarity has come because of the data. And that data must be of good quality. Now, bias in uh, with the data, we need two things. The ultimate requirement is accuracy. Every time we collect data, we need accuracy. So what do we mean by accuracy? Whatever we measure and whatever is the true value are same. Imagine, uh, no, not imagine, you all have a watch. Just look at your watch and tell me what's the time now? What's the time now? 12.06. 12.06. The true time is 12.06 and your watch is also telling 12.06. All the watches are telling 12.06. Can you see consistency here? Everybody is having the same reading. That means your measurement system is fantastic in terms of consistency. The same measurement system is, you know, fantastic in terms of accuracy also. Why do I say accuracy? The, the real time is 12.06. And your measurement system is also giving the same reading. When the true value and the measured value are exactly, exactly same, you are accurate. If all the, if you use multiple measurement system, and if all the measurement system give the same reading, your readings are consistent. So, every time you collect data, there are two things come into picture. What are the two things? One is consistency. Another one is accuracy. accuracy. Do you think both are important or only accuracy is important? Both, both, are, both, important. are, important. both are important. Because whenever the scenario is, you know, multiple, the scenario involves multiple measurement system. The scenario, whenever scenario involves multiple measurement system, like just now the example, I wanted all of you to check the time. 
I had 40 measurement system. I can't simply be, you know, biased with one particular person, isn't it? So, in, to stay neutral, I asked each one of you to measure. Now, consistency plays the major role first. Yes or no? If all of you started giving me different, different time, now what will I do? Whom I will believe? I will simply take the average and then use the average, isn't it? Because when I take the average, half of the error will get eliminated. Half of the error will get eliminated. All of you, do you understand whatever I am speaking right now? Whenever you take, you also come under similar scenario. It can be, it can be multiple measurement system or it can be single measurement system used multiple times. All of you understand my language? Yes. In all these scenario, consistency has to be ensured first requirement. Because, because uh, when consistency itself is the problem, even though you have got a sophisticated measurement system, your data will have error. Am I right? All of you have the best available uh, watch with you. A digital watch, all of you have, isn't it? But still, if there is no consistency, we have to live with certain amount of error. All of you agree with me or not? Yes. Yeah. First yes. thing is to first thing is to ensure the consistency. If all of us are consistent, now the problem in the measurement system can be further looked into for accuracy. All of you are consistent. Now all of you can be consistently correct, and all of you can be consistently wrong also. Both are possible. If all of you are consistently correct, then you are also accurate. You have consistency, you have accuracy, no problem with the measurement system. 1206 is absolutely fine. All of us agree. If time is 1206, but you say 1208, what is the problem now? Your watch is two, your watch is two minutes faster. Your watch is two minutes faster. This two minutes is known as bias. Now your reading is inaccurate. All of you understand? What yes. is bias then? What is bias? The difference between the true value you and measured value. Measured value. The difference between true value and measured value. So two minutes is the bias over and above. Half of the inconsistency will also will also uh, bring some bias. All of you, do you understand? Let us say the, the error due to inconsist inconsistency is three minutes. All of you understand what I am telling now? The error due to inconsistency. That means, no, to 1206, 12, the bias is to two minutes, so 1208. But then I see your readings ranging from 1208 to 1211. So what is the error due to inconsistency? Three minutes. All of you understand now? All your readings are varying, ranging from 1208 to 1211. That means this 1208 to 1211 is three minutes there is an inconsistency. Can you see that all of you? Yeah. Now, what in, in order to handle this scenario, what will I do is, first I will average your reading. When I average your reading, half of the inconsistency will get eliminated. Mm. Three minutes will now become 1.5 minutes. All right. Now, I will conclude the reading is 1209.5. Now, this 1.5 is due to what? Inconsistency. But 2 minutes is due to what? The bias in your measurement system. All your watches are running 2 minutes faster. Straight away, there is a bias. An additional 1.5 minutes also becomes the bias because of the inconsistency. All of you, do you understand? Now, in order to correct this measurement system, first thing I should focus is, I should first con I con no, control and minimize the inconsistency. I will teach all of you how to measure. So, all of you will, will become consistent, first of all. 
if all of you become consistent then i will improve the measurement system and now the bias will come down drastically which will make my reading more and more accurate hope it is clear to all of you see always you know you can pay 100% attention and gain 100% clarity always you can pay 90% attention and you know lose all the clarity because of the 10% possible some of you might have experienced it already day 1 and day 2 finished and wherever you know you have lost something and that will definitely trouble you with all other uh, because the, there is a flow we are following all of you can see that define measure analyze improve control step number 1 step number 2 there is a connectivity right so please pay complete attention you have any issues with the paying the attention just switch on your video immediately you will gain all the concentration right <laughs> so you will be able to focus all right now there is an example can one of you read out the question for me so that i will explain i will also get uh, some break in between who is going to read out for me i will read sir yeah please the standard with a known value of 25.4 mm is checked 10 times by one mechanical inspector using a dial caliper with a resolution of 0.025 mm okay. the reading is plain or so and so yeah reading you don't have to read out so there are 10 readings that means uh, sudhagar has measured a standard standard means the true value is known 25.4 mm he measured it 10 times and now it is coming to a scenario of using the measure same measurement system repeatedly all right and now 10 readings he got now i want to understand the bias in it now how do i calculate bias first thing sudhagar should do is sudhagar should average his reading you know why we are why we are going for the average isn't it reducing the bias reducing all the, the inconsistency we are reducing it to half we are not eliminating we are reducing it to half that is the purpose of average after taking average we realize our average is 25.4051 but what is the true value 25.4 now the difference is 0.0051 0.0051 is the bias 0.0051 what is the unit millimeter millimeter every hmm. single reading using this measurement system is expected to have a bias of 0.0051 mm like your watch giving extra 2 minutes always this measuring instrument will always give 0.0051 mm as error in this case it is positive now the bias is known as positive bias sometimes the bias can be negative also that is also possible isn't it your watch can also run slow your watch running 10 minutes faster the bias is plus 10 minutes when your watch is 10 minutes slower the bias is negative bias right you should know how to handle your bias if you know how to handle your bias that is known as calibration that is not no that is known as calibration we'll see that there are two things one is calibrating the data another one is calibrating the measuring instrument if you know if you if you don't know how to calibrate the data then you have to calibrate the measurement system all right now see here i want to express the bias either you can leave it like this and in here you have to put 0.0051 mm 0.0051 mm another way of expressing bias is as a percentage if you score uh, 40 out of uh, 50 questions then what is your mark 80% because 40 by 50 and then multiply by 100 is 80% same manner i am going to express bias as a percentage of the tolerance tolerance is always you know upper uh, see here it is given plus or minus 0.25 upper limit minus lower limit what is the total tolerance 0.5 when compared mm -hmm. to the tolerance the error is 0.0051 which is 1% what is the industry standard the bias must be less than 10% here in this case it is how much one just just 1% so you are having a good measurement system all of you understand yeah very good this is how you all must deal with the bias bias is a measure of inaccuracy more the bias 
less the accurate, less the accuracy. All of you understand, more the bias, less the accuracy. If I know my watch is 10 minutes faster throughout the day, do you think I can use my watch? Yes. Every time I need a I need the reading, I look at my watch and I know it is 10 minutes faster. Subtract 10 minutes. Subtract 10. This is called calibration of data. You calibrate your data so that you can effectively eliminate the bias and your readings will become accurate. Do you understand? The calibration formula will be very clear if the bias is constant. Am I correct, all of you? If the watch is yes. running 10 minutes faster throughout the day, can I say the bias is constant throughout the day? Yes. Yes. When, when bias is constant, situation is easy to manage. Calibration procedure will become very simple and visible so that you can subtract the bias or add the bias and convert your you know, inaccurate readings into accurate readings. You don't have to change your watch. You can still use the same watch. But if the bias is not constant, very dynamic, what will you do? Calibration is not possible. You will start telling that, sir, my watch is not accurate, sir. You can't rely. But I can tell the time, but you can't rely. Isn't it? You will, you will start speaking in this. So to overcome this, what will you do? You will either service your watch or you change your watch. You are the best judge, isn't it? When to service your watch and then when to change your watch. When you service your watch, that is known as calibrating the measuring instrument. All of you are with me? Yeah. Come on, tell me, all of you, at what? Yes, all of you, please tell me, at what frequency you you service your watch? Only you yearly. Yearly. Uh, yeah, yearly once. Yearly once, we change the watch and then get it serviced. This is called calibration frequency. Once you are used to a particular instrument, you will you will gain all this knowledge. Yes or no? Yes. If you has if you know your watch is no battery is draining very fast, and within three months the battery becomes useless, then what will you do? Replace. You will, Replace. You will change the watch battery once in three months instead of changing once in a year, isn't it? So by knowing the nature of the you know, measuring instrument you need to have a calibration plan. All of mm -hmm. you yes. yeah. Calibration can be yearly once or six months once or quarterly once. If the calibration cost is too high, sometimes we will throw away the instrument and then go for a new instrument. Ultimately, what is that we are, we are looking for? We are looking for accurate readings. All of you understand why yes, you yes. all do the calibration. So how can, what are the ideas now we have to make our readings accurate? Calibration of measurement, calibration of measurement tool hmm. using calibration methods. Calib by we, the calibration, uh, we should be able to calibrate the data or we should be able to calibrate the instrument. Calibrating the data and calibrating the instrument are two different things. For calibrating the data, you should have a clear estimate of the bias. The bias must be stable. That is constant. If it is unstable, highly unstable, very dynamic, then you can't calibrate your data. Right? In that case, you will you will calibrate your measuring instrument. You have to calibrate your measuring instrument. That's why you all calibrate, isn't it? After one year of usage, you know that the bias will start you know, becoming dynamic. And that's why you calibrate every instrument once in a year at least. Isn't it? Some instrument. Uh, and uh, the next thing is, you might increase the calibration frequency. Over and above, you need to take best care of the measuring instrument. You should take care of the you know, proper maintenance of the equipment. Isn't it? The usage instruction have to be very clear. How to use vernier caliper, how to use the coordinate measuring machine, how to use the micrometer. Everything, you know, the instructions, because instruction can also be the source of error. When there is an error, there is an inaccuracy, you should always say the error is due to the measurement system. Because inside the system, there are several elements. 
the instrument itself is part of the measurement system the person who is using the instrument he is also part of the measurement system yes or no the instruction that is given to the person that is also part of the measurement system third element the characteristics that you measure that itself can be another element certain characteristics are easy to measure certain characteristics are difficult to measure the environment under which the characteristics is measured that is also part of the measurement system there are five elements like your panjapuda right so your uh, measuring instrument the appraiser the operational definition the part and the characteristics that is getting measured and finally the environment the source of error can be any of the five clear to all of you that mm -hmm. is why that is why every you know piece of uh, uh, what do you call uh, the measurement system is important now we spoke about the bias and we understood certain way of minimizing the bias but in the process of bias we know even after we you know and we even after uh, we understand the bias we have we have still not understood one thing you know what is that half of the error due to inconsistency am i right half of the error due to inconsistency so what is this inconsistency right and there are uh, two scenarios here one is known as repeatability error another one is reproducibility error now as usual one of you can you read out the definition of repeatability before you read out i would like to help you know uh, let you understand that repeatability is good we need repeatability what we don't need is we don't need repeatability error is that clear to all of you because before reading the definition you should know this repeatability is good we need it because repeatability simply means consistency <laughs> but repeatability error we don't want because it is a form of inconsistency now who is going to read i want everybody to participate right you now there are many people i see you know they are very very you know silent participant no make some noise when an opportunity is given <clears throat> come on this time who is going to read ah lakshmi madam you can read repeatability is the consistency of a single appraiser to measure the same part of multiple times with the same measurement system it is related to the standard deviation of measured value beautiful i am asking lakshmi madam to measure something repeatedly he measures repeatedly and gives me same readings she is now consistent isn't it i am not saying she is correct she is correct or not that's the next question but she brought me same reading all the time she is repeatable now please note okay. consistency doesn't mean accuracy she brought the same reading when in that condition when you take the average average will also be same correct yes yes but what if if she brings different reading ideally he she is supposed to bring the same reading all 10 times because i asked her to measure the same thing repeatedly yes or no 100 yes. mm 100 mm is the part value i want her to measure 100 mm 10 times and every time she brought me some number other than 100 that means definitely her reading has got bias and one reading is different from other bias is one component and inconsistency is other component isn't it now to understand what exactly is the bias first of all i should know understand the error due to the consistency now if you involve one appraiser or one measurement system and then repeat your readings measurement the inconsistency is known as repeatability error inconsistency while single appraiser measure the same part multiple times using the same measurement system is known as repeatability error when i say inconsistency 
I should use the word repeatability error. When I use consistency, then I should use the word repeatability. All of you are with me on this? Yes. Okay. Now imagine uh, I asked Lakshmi Madam to measure 100 mm 10 times and all 10 times she brought me the same reading. Let me say she, she brought exactly 100 all 10 times. That means her readings are accurate as well as consistent. Yes, yes or no? Correct. Yes, yes. Under this condition, I want you to measure the variation in the data. Will you be able to measure variation? No. No. no because the... That's a zero variation. To measure variation. All are identical. To zero measure, variation. To measure variation, we have certain statistical tools. There are yeah. three tools. Range, standard deviation, variance. Range, standard deviation, and then? Variance. 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 What is range? Variance measures the dispersion from the mean, from the average mean. Mm. Always use simple words so that everybody can understand. I don't know whether people know. Range this. can be difference between mean and max. Yeah, difference between minimum and maximum. That is the range. Very simple. The difference mm -hmm. between maximum and minimum. That is range. And Lakshmi's uh, maximum is 100. Minimum is also 100. So the range is 0. Variation is 0. When variation is 0, the repeatability error is 0. All of you understand? We are now okay. able to measure even the measurement error. Clear? Mm -hmm. When there are three options, range, Standard deviation will work when you have large data. All of you understand what I'm speaking now? So when standard the data is continuous distribution, continuous, then that, standard deviation is ideal. Yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. Continuous uh, data, yes, standard deviation is ideal. Very good. So, the best measure of variation is standard deviation. Calculate the standard deviation. And then, and then once the standard deviation is known, then, then, you know, the history is known. Once the standard deviation is known, which simply means the horoscope is understood. Once the horoscope is understood, what will happen in the future? You can comment, isn't it? So once the standard deviation is known, the estimate of the repeatability error can be understood can be even quantified, can be estimated. The simple formula is 6 times standard deviation. I will let you understand why it is 6 little later. All right, all of you. But don't get into too much of max and stats. Take the points and use the tools for some period of time. Maybe Excel, maybe Minitab, and later on you can dive deeper. Yes, madam, you have a question, Narmada, madam. Uh, sir, single appraiser using the same instrument and generating different readings, you said is repeatability error. Yes. So, in the same uh, line, how do you define a bias? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bias, bias, you know, is always the difference between the measured value and the true value. When you have multiple readings collected, in order to calculate the bias, you need a single reading, not multiple reading. So, you average out your readings. After calculating average, you find out the difference between the average reading and the true reading, and the true value. Okay, so that after, is after noting down the different readings of the same uh, appraiser with the same instrument, we arrive at the mean. And we calculate the bias uh, uh, as uh, comparison with it. Correct. Correct. See the see the procedure. Same procedure. You have noted down all ten readings. Now you have taken average, and now the distance of the average from the true value is measured, which is nothing but bias. Okay. Now the clarity I want all of you to have is the point double zero five one. Even though we call it bias. Part of the bias is due to the measurement system. And 
another part of the bias is due to the inconsistency in your measurement. All right. If I correct the measurement system, definitely bias will go away. When I calibrate, bias will go away, isn't it? But even then, when my people you know when they in when they measure inconsistently, a small portion of the bias will not go away. That is repeatability error. Repeatability error will happen even in a new instrument. Please note all of you. Even if you buy a you know, important equipment from Germany, right? It is it is completely new, brand new, and you use it for data collection. Even the brand new equipment will have some, will bring some error. All of you, you agree with me? Yes, yes. Sir. That is not because of you no, know, and there is no fault with the measuring system, measurement system. But the way it is used brought some inconsistency, and so some error is brought. That is known as repeatability error. Now, I want one other participant to read the definition of reproducibility error or reproducibility. Come on, one other participant. Can I have someone, Gurusami, uh, uh, Sendil, sir? Yes, please. Yes, uh, reproducibility is the consistency of different appraisers in measuring the same part with the same measurement system. Mm. It's related to standard deviation of the distribution of. Uh, see here, standard deviation is coming. They are they are giving you a clue because standard deviation is the best out of the three options. So it is the more the standard deviation, more the repeatability error, more the reproducibility error. Now Sendil is talking about reproducibility error. That means there are multiple measurement system. So multiple appraiser. I am collecting. Yep, I am collecting reading and Sindhil is also collecting his reading. Narmada Madam is also collecting reading. Bharat also collecting reading. Sudhagar also collecting reading. Now, five people are involved in data collection. But we don't agree to each other. But the, but the reality is, all of us are measuring the same thing. We all have the same measurement system. We are all instructed the same manner. But then I bring some reading and Sindhil is bringing some other reading. We don't agree to each other. This is another form of inconsistency. This is now known as reproducibility error. How can I compare my reading with Sendil reading and then with Narmada's reading and then with Bharat and Sudhakar reading? I'll calculate my average. I calculate Sudha, Sendil average. I calculate Sudhakar's average, Bharat average, Narmada's average. And I will check whether all these averages are same or not. If all these averages are different, there is a variation. Now I will type all these averages in a column, Excel sheet. I will quantify this variation. How to quantify? I will calculate standard deviation out of it. If that standard deviation is too much, reproducibility error is too much. I know whatever the error that is populating because of the reproducibility error will add up to the bias, isn't it? Half of which will add up to the bias. So ultimately, it is the bias. I want to see it less than 10%. So unless and until I control repeatability error and reproducibility error, I will not be able to calibrate my data properly, calibrate my equipment properly. Hope all of you understood very clearly now what is repeatability error and what is reproducibility error. Is that clear? Please confirm, all of you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, okay. Is that all of you, are you gaining more and more clarity or are you confusing more and more? Both will happen. Both will happen. Normally in a Six Sigma training program, both will happen. You gain clarity one side, at the same time you will lose clarity on the other side. Average. Ah, so now average is zero. <laughs> so it is in your hand to ensure you gain more by losing something on the other side, right? Because the terminologies are a little confusing. So you have to stay very attentive. And that's how you know you can stop the leakage and you can return everything we speak. Now let's do a small... 
yeah average is zero then uh, we learned... all the values are zero <laughs> yeah then we we learned nothing out of the program so that may also happen so please take care of yourself all right so now we are going to do a small exercise i invite all of you to participate you need to participate right for that you should have a machining instrument and then you should come on video and then i will explain what are we going to do it's going to be a data collection activity and i will help you understand get the feel of the repeatability error and the reproducibility error i have few appraisers already on video narmada bharat sudhakar and who are the other participants who are willing to participate please show up come on and even if you don't participate you can come on and then just witness how what these people are going to do we are going to dance together now right because you have been sitting on the same chair so long you should be sleeping now you should be feeling sleepy so you can you can stand a while and then dance to help you dance i will play some beautiful songs from this side right and listening to the song you can dance but what is most important than dancing for the song is you should measure something right and the measuring instrument we are going to use is the stopwatch in your phone can you please show me your stopwatch on the screen yeah so all our appraisers hope you all have the stopwatch i will also show mine three all of you please participate so something like this yeah now you should know all about the measuring instrument you know when you are using an instrument isn't it that's very very important if you don't know what kind of instrument you use and how do we define the you know uh, the characteristics of a measuring instrument there is another important concept or terminology known as least count hope all of you know it right least count a vernier caliper has a least count micrometer has a least count the stopwatch also yes, has a yes. least count second and uh, least count is also known as resolution least count is also known as resolution can you please find out the resolution of the stopwatch in your hand Second. One second. No, no. Point zero one second. Milliseconds. Milliseconds. Yeah. Can you find out the resolution? Point zero one second. Beautiful. I think all others should clap for Rohit. <laughs> Rohit is the one who gave the right answer, right? no sound is coming i think we have yeah. to do everything yeah. right yeah clap yeah you clap and uh, celebrate some small success all right very good so 0.01 is the perfect answer 0.01 all right now you all of you have the same instrument because all all your resolution is 0.01 now what will i do is i am going to play this song from my side and all of you are going to enjoy hearing this song you can also dance along with the song but what's more important is you should find out you should measure the duration of the song the duration for which i am i will be playing the song must be measured so what is ctq here song duration the operational definition is the moment the song is played you have to switch on your stopwatch the moment the song stops you have to stop the stopwatch and the duration captured is nothing but the song duration all of you are clear yeah okay one third of the participant i am seeing active right but remaining two third you are still silent whether we play the song or dance still you want to be silent right so participate even if you dance i don't mind watching you dancing on the screen no problem are we ready now yeah to measure randomly i will collect yes. data from you and we will see whether error is populating or you are all very consistent right we are going to see so now the first song ah 
this is uh, mukabala song right 3 2 1 and here we go oh continue the recording okay so now i am sharing my screen so that you can see okay now hope all of you can see my screen let me make it little bigger okay now who are on the screen i'll collect reading from them now narmada madam uh, madam what is your first reading for uh, oh, first reading is 56.59 seconds okay let me remove these names <coughs> okay i played only three songs the 4 5 6 are not required remove ah uh, yes madam 50 56.59 56.50 59 oh 55 yeah 5999 okay. oh, 59 okay now second person okay you are second reading madam your second reading 61.21 61.21 okay third reading 60.80 60.80 now the second appraiser i move on to the second appraiser i think sudhakar you can give your reading okay sudhakar yes 57.43 57.43 keep your voice little you know uh, louder we are going to hear is switched off yeah a uh, second one second song 59.26 59.26 thank you third one 1 minute 01 27 that means 61.27 or 27 27 so all all the reading should be in one single unit only seconds 61.27 now the third reading i am going to ask from bharat Yes, Bharat. Uh, yes, sir. 55.45. 55.45. Second reading. 59.54. Nine point five four. Sixty one point zero three. Sixty one point seven. Zero three. No zero three. Seven zero. Zero three. Sixty one point zero Okay. Now next reading, Arun Kumar. Arun Kumar, you can give me your yeah. reading. Fifty-six point nine nine. Fifty-six point nine nine. Sixty point eight one. Sixty point eight one. Sixty point zero zero. Zero one. Sixty point zero zero. Very good. Arun Kumar gave me reading, and then now Krishna Rao, you can give me your reading. First song, Mukabala, fifty-seven point nine zero. Come again, come again. Fifty, fifty-seven point nine zero. Okay. First reading is fifty-seven point nine zero. Second reading, sixty-one point three zero. Sixty-one point three zero. And the third reading, sixty point four zero. Sixty point four zero. So, Megdeep Banerji, would you like to give a reading? Let me type yeah. your name here, Megdeep. Yeah, Megdeep, your reading. Uh, first one is fifty-seven point five nine. Fifty-seven point five nine. The second one. Second one is sixty-one point zero two. Sixty-one point zero two. Third one. Third one is sixty. Six zero. Sixty point zero zero. Right. Perfect. Okay. All right. So anyone else waiting to give a reading? May I? A lot of people now. One who is who is ready now? May I? Neeraj. One minute. I am not able to see you. Who wants to say Neeraj? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So I just type your name. Yes, Neeraj. Tell me. Fifty-seven point seven four. Fifty-seven point seven four. Second reading. Sixty point one zero. Sixty point one zero. Third reading. Sixty one point three nine. Zero nine, right? Three nine. Oh, three nine. All right, three nine. 
I think we have uh, page. I see some people waiting. Pani, Abhishek, right? These two people are waiting. I'll take their reading. No, Pani. Yeah. First one is uh, 57.35. 57.35. Second one? 60.28. 60.28. Third one? 61.74. 7.4. Then I will shake. 61.14. One minute. 61.43. Yeah? Oh, 61.14. Yeah. One 61.14. Four. One four. One four. Okay. Then uh, I think I'll, I'll close with this. Avishek, you can tell you already. Yes, sir. The first one is 58.30. Uh, 58.30. Second one. Second one is 61.50. 61.50, okay. Yes, sir. And the third one is 61.05. All right. So, enough. 61.05. Yes, so, we have got a lot of readings. And this is how you all must conduct the gauge r and r study. All of you can see my slide show now. The readings are now very you know clearly visible. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, when you conduct the gauge R&R study, measurement system analysis in your workplace, you must have minimum 10 samples. But I have played only 3 samples, 3 songs, isn't it? Because when I play 10 songs, then the session will continue up to 10 o'clock in the night. I have to leave all of you by 5.30. By Right? That's the promise we have given. So, only three songs I played. But normally, in a real gauge r and study, ten samples are must. Clear all of you. Another thing. You have to make choice of the appraiser. Here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine appraiser. Nine is too much. Too high. You can take any number from three to five. 3 to 5. 3 is good number. 3 appraiser. One more thing you all should do, which I have not done. Every sample must be measured at least two times. That is known as replication. That is known as replication. And now we have done some data. See here, first song. First song, what is the song? Mukabala song, right? Are you able to see some variation? Yeah. Yes. That means there is an error. What is this error called as? Bias. No, no, no. Bias. Bias. Ultimately, we are going to calculate bias. But now we are talking about inconsistency. Repeatability. Is it repeatability error or reproducibility error? Reproducibility. Reproducibility. Reproducibility error. Because can you see, if you see vertically, can you see multiple appraiser here? Reproducibility. Ah, this is reproducibility error. All of you understand? Every time we measured, error has populated. Can you see that? Always there is an inconsistency. Always there will be a variation. This is a rule of the nature. Variation, you can't eliminate completely. There will be variation. Right? So every column has got a reproducibility error. You need to quantify. Very simple. For quantification, you just have to calculate some statistics. That's all. What is the statistics that is helping you to understand the variation? Standard deviation. And so, somehow, calculate standard deviation, multiply the standard deviation by 6, you will get an estimate of the error. How much error this theme can bring or how much error this measurement system can bring is equal to 6 times the standard deviation or 6 times the variation in terms of standard deviation. Now, you all understood how reproducibility error has populated, isn't it? Now, I am going to tell one important, you know, confidential information, which you should also keep it confidential while conducting the gauge r and r study. How many songs I played? Three. 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 Songs. What if, if I tell you all three songs are nothing but the same songs? You thought that they are different songs, isn't it? But actually, 
I kept the duration same for all the three songs. Mukabala song also original duration is 60 seconds. Rowdy Baby song also the true uh, duration is 60 seconds. Bagubali duration also 60 seconds. Which means actually all the songs are same. So for example, Narmada Madam heard the same song three times and gave me three different readings. Can you see that? I could see an error horizontally also. Operator wise, there is an inconsistency. Within the operator, I could see an inconsistency. So first row created by Narmada Madam has got an inconsistency. What is this error? Repeatability. Repeatability. Repeatability error. Repeatability error due to Narmada Madam. Similarly, every operator has got a quantum of repeatability error. Can you see that all of you? Every horizontal column has some repeatability error. Every vertical column has some reproducibility error. You have to sum up all the repeatability error. You have to sum up all the reproducibility error. How the calculation works? We'll take a deeper look little later because I don't want you to confuse with too much at a time, right? So somehow if you can quantify the repeatability error, now that the idea you have is six times standard deviation. All right. So repeatability error added with reproducibility error, collectively known as precision error. When I add the repeatability error and the reproducibility error, what is the total error called as? Precision error. Precision error. This precision error should be compared against the tolerance. What is tolerance? Upper spec minus lower spec. spec. Normally, tolerance is given by the customer. Imagine you wanted a song of 60 seconds duration. You wanted a song, you want to shoot a song of how much duration? 60 seconds. Now, it is difficult to make it exactly 60. So, you give some tolerance 60 plus or minus 0.5. 60 plus or minus 0.5. Now, what is your upper spec? 60.5. Lower spec 59.5. The difference is one second. One second is the customer provided tolerance. Now, how much error is permissible in this scenario? 0.1 second. Isn't it? So, now, I compare the precision against the tolerance. Now, it becomes a ratio. You can call it precision tolerance ratio. It is otherwise known as gauge R and R value. It is otherwise known as gauge R and R value. This gauge R and R value should be less than 10 percent all of you are clear with me this gauge r and r value should be less than 10 percent to say that your measurement system is good and acceptable if the gauge r and r value is in the range of 10 to 30 percent your measurement system is conditionally acceptable if the gauge r and r value is more than 30 percent your measurement system is unacceptable in any scenario this is known as measurement system analysis. The expectation is gauge R and R should be less than 10%. If it is not 10%, you need to analyze further with the help of the data collected. You need to analyze further with the help of the data collected. This is the summary of what you learned in the measurement system validation. Only thing I have not talked is Study variation. Everything we discussed. Bias, repeatability, reproducibility, gauge R and R, we discussed. And part tolerance, we know upper spec, lower spec. What is steady variation? Whenever you are left in a scenario where the specifications are not clear, that means upper spec and lower spec are not provided to you, that time steady variation is used in place of customer tolerance what is steady variation the variation in your data the variation in your data maybe the maximum 
reading in your data and minimum reading in your data. The difference is the study variation. All of you are with me now. All of you, do you understand how to calculate gauge R and R? So that completes the measurement system validation. But oh, time is 23. But still, I'm not going to leave you for the lunch because I want you to you know, understand one thing before going for the lunch. So the calculation, since the steps we have not completely discussed, we definitely have to rely on some template, isn't it? A template which can do the calculation for us, but always at a later stage, if you really have you know, a lot of curiosity to understand how the calculation steps are, little max, we are ready to teach, but you need to come back either by joining our MBB program or you need to ask us separately. Don't think that the course is over and then learnings are over. No, then you are completely wrong. You need to ask, sir, this is the data. How do I calculate gauge R and R? One method I'm going to show you. All of you are able to see my minute of screen now. So I, in, yes. in order to conduct the gauge R and R uh, study or analysis, you need data in three columns. First column, appraiser. Second column, the part detail. Third column, the measurement. You should have the data in three columns. Let me pick up one already you know, stored project data. I go to file, I go to open worksheet, and then I click this, this, you know, named as Minitab sample data folder. Look in Minitab sample data folder. Now I type gauge here. When I type gauge, it comes like this, gauge AIAG.mtw. I'm only just opening a data file. I'm, I'm doing nothing. So now a file is opened. Can you see part number? operator name and then measurement see here there are so much reading and part number part number there are 10 parts can you see 10 parts here can you see three operators yeah, yeah. 10 parts three operators and each part is measured by each operator three times can you see that yeah each part measured by each operator three times this is known as replication. Three replication, 10 parts, three operators. 10 into 3 into 3. How much? 90. The 90 readings are required now to conduct the gauge R study. See here. Can you see 90 readings? Yeah. Now you can calculate the gauge R and R value. And leaving the steps, let's generate the report. Go to stat, go to quality tools, go to gauge study, go to gauge R and R study crossed. The study is known as crossed because the same part is measured by all the operation. Part is common. So the study is known as crossed. I click that. And now Minitab has to know where the part number information is available. It is available in column number one. I click and select where the operator information is available. It is available in column number two. I click and select where the measured data is available. It's available in column number three. I click and then select. Now there are two options for me. Use ANOVA method or HBAR R method. And ANOVA we have still not known. So comparatively, the easier method is X bar R. I click this and then gauge info. You can type whatever gauge name you want. Your gauge is X, Y, Z gauge. The date of study is today is 19 August and reported by the black bells and any gauge tolerance. This is just, you know, some uh, formatting. That's all. We are not doing anything. Okay. But come here, option. This is very important. Can you see a number six here? Mm -hmm. You remember, I also yeah, told you to, to get an estimate of the error. Six sigma. You have to get your sigma and then multiply by six. six. So that is the same logic is used here. Now, lower spec and upper spec, you should know. If you don't know, Minitab will automatically use any variation. Now, Either you give upper spec, lower spec, or you give the difference. Let me give, you know, like this. 
the difference between upper spec and lower spec let me say the difference is 12 some value right upper spec is one value lower spec is one value difference is 12 now with all these input now the tolerance is known when i say 12 what does it mean the tolerance is known denominator is known with this condition i am giving okay now in no time the report is generated all of you can you see the report coming out automatically you have not you know made any calculation these graphs if you are good at reading these graphs you can find out the root of the problem and then you can improve your measurement system maybe improving the operator maybe improving the measurement equipment or maybe improving the operation definition what exactly you know you will be able to understand if you are good at reading these graphs these are tools what is the first graph do you know the name of the first graph all of you this is your bar chart isn't it and what is this tool a control chart control chart and this control is chart. bar chart this is x bar chart we are going to learn control chart also in the control phase tomorrow that will happen and this is box plot these are you know some graphs it is named as measurement by part here it is named as part operator interaction graph if you know how to read all these graphs you will definitely be able to find out the root cause of the error and then you can take action and then gauge r and r will go down now let's see how much is the gauge r and r in this data you have to go here this is known as session window you can see this icon when i click this it will bring me here see here now the report is available here you can copy and then present it see all the conditions of your whatever i typed x y z date etc appearing here now there is a first table which you can time being leave because the first table and the second table has the same information but no they are constructed in two different method let us not worry about first method let us come to the second method the second method is based on standard deviation now can you see total gauge r and r here how much it is reading how much it is 15.25 percentage now under this condition tell me is your measurement system good acceptable or conditionally good or unacceptable conditionally acceptable conditionally, conditionally, conditionally good right there is a risk involved and the risk is beyond the industry practice that's why it is conditionally acceptable you have to take a call right within the gauge r and r value repeatability number is here it is only a number right there is no other you know uh, conclusion here repeatability expressed as 10.09 reproducibility is 11 that means reproducibility is little on the higher side and now part to part what is part to part this is the real problem you are trying to attack in your project there is a pro variation in the product itself that is the variation in your capital y that's the process variation process variation and measurement variation are different you are trying to minimize reduce the process variation for that we need a good measurement system so we are measuring the variation due to measurement now total variation is this much so what you need to look at is gauge r and r value which is 15% 15% age is conditionally acceptable all of you will you be able to do it yourself if you have the data all that you need is conduct an experiment in a fair manner no bias right like you know when i conducted the gauge r and r study with you i did not even let you know that i may, i played the same same song i i didn't let you know that all the songs had the same duration isn't it same mm -hmm. manner you should also keep certain information confidential with you so that the results will make sense you can interpret properly data collection plan is very very important so i need to stop here so that we can go for the lunch right is that helpful all of you Yes, sir. It's really helpful.